Hello, I'm Sky Taylor and welcome to another Q&A. It's where artists just like you ask questions. Any type of questions related to my videos or art, put the questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if I feel that other people can benefit from it, I will put together a Q&A, a question and answer video just like this one and we'll share with the world over a cup of coffee. Remember one thing, folks, it's my opinion. It's just my opinion, and hopefully it'll give you some insight. That's how I feel and what I do. Doesn't mean I'm 100% right, but it's what I do, and I will tell you the honest truth, how I feel about your question and answer. I'll do my best to answer it correctly. And anything that you ask me in my uh, under my videos, I will answer. I take the time to answer everybody. You're important to me. Okay, let's get on with it and hey, get a cup of coffee. Put this on pause, go get a cup of coffee. I'll wait for you. Okay. Okay, the first question comes from Tina Tran. Hi Sky, how do you name the painting? If I paint an abstract painting, how do I name it? Thanks very much. Well, Tina, let me tell you my little secret. You know, if you think about it, when you're painting abstracts, sometimes names could be very difficult, but I, I came up with a real simple solution, and I'm going to share that with you and the world. Usually, as a rule, by now, you know it's no secret. I love to paint by music. I'll put on Pandora you know, maybe Celtic music or any type of music that fits my mood, whether it's rock and roll or whatever. And as I'm painting the painting, I'm listening to the song. Now, what song inspires me, whatever song inspires me, sometimes I'll use the title of that song as the title of my abstract. Real simple. But if you listen to the music, sometimes these artists are brilliant. I mean, they will, they'll, they'll phrase, uh, the way they phrase their lyrics sometimes can be incredible. And you could take a phrase from one of the songs, you know, lyric-wise, and create a title from that. I've done that and came up with some really interesting titles. You know, it's just by listening when you're painting and what inspires you. You'll never have a loss for paintings if you do it that way. Use the title of a song or a phrase that one of the artists sang and wrote, you know. Some of these artists are just totally incredible. I love James Taylor. Uh, I never used to, never used to like James Taylor. I thought he was a very mediocre singer. And then when I got older, I finally understood him. He's one of my favorite artists. He's awesome. I mean, I listen to his lyrics and his phrasings. The guy's a genius and makes some great titles. <laughs> okay, hope that helped you out. You shouldn't have a problem if you do it that way. Okay, coffee break. Mm. I'm reading from my computer, so excuse me if I'm looking down here. Uh, Callahan, okay, let's see if I can get this right. Callahan Neri K. Airy. Okay, hope I got that right. <clears throat> Hi, Sky. Thanks for the video. And now I have a question for you. Well, that's what I'm here for. I live in the Pacific Northwest, and it's so damp here, even the sheep have moss growing on their backs. Not just the north-facing ones, either. Okay. While I store my acrylic paintings upright and try not to let them touch each other, Anything they are leaning up against or touching gets tacky and wants to pull the paint up. I've put sheets of wax paper along these edges, edges, which helps, but I'm wondering if varnishing would be the better way to go here. I am thinking that moving to a sunny place might be a better way to go right now, even though they have pretty good coffee here. <laughs> okay. Well... I'll tell you what the problem is, is that you have a humidity problem. That could be part of the, the problem right there. You might have high humidity. 
and what's happening is your paintings are sticking. Um, that could always be a problem. So I think that you might help solve most of your problem if you get a dehumidifier in that room. Try to get a room that you can uh, um, just put your paintings in and put a dehumidifier in it. You know, if it's wide open space, it could be a problem. You know, if you have damp, uh, damp, uh, dampness all over, you know, a, a wide open space. But if you can confine your paintings to like an 8x10 room or a bedroom or something where you can kind of control the humidity, that's going to help you. We're going to talk about storing paintings later on. I'm going to do a video on how to store your paintings. Get a lot of paintings in a small area, especially if you live in an apartment. But that's in a little bit. That's coming up. Okay, what can you do to help your paintings from sticking? Should you varnish them? You know, varnish can get tacky too if it's high humidity. What you never want to do, and I don't think you do, uh, I don't think this is your problem, but a lot of people will put their paintings face to face after they've painted them. And that's one of the worst things you can do because acrylic paint is very, very tacky. It does, especially if it is in high humidity. Your paintings, like you said you do, you store them upright, that's correct. You want to always store your paintings upright. You know, this way the wood doesn't warp. If you lean them on an angle like this, you could have a real problem. But you do store them upright and never face to face. You turn them around, it's always the back of one painting to the front of the next, like this. That's going to cut down on a lot of the sticking problem. Number two, number two. What I do is, we're going to use these as an example. Of course, you probably have bigger paintings. You want to always try to group your paintings according to size. You know, try to get all the same size together. If they're smaller, put all your small ones together. And your larger ones, try to keep them together like this. Okay, what I do is I have painter's tape. And I will line the back with painter's tape, much like this. Let me see if I can do this here. Now, I was able to pick this painter's tape up at my local dollar store. I'm not talking about Dollar Tree or any of those franchise ones. Sometimes your hometown local dollar store, your independent, has some real bargains because what they do is they buy closeouts. So sometimes you can get some really good deals. I happen to luck out and get this painter's tape. I bought like 60 rolls. I got it for a buck a piece. So I bought 60 rolls. I've been using it a long time. And what I use it for, one of the things, it's probably not the best tape in the world, but it's good enough to, what you do is you do the back of the paintings like this. Do one side like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Got a frog in my throat. Okay. And do the back of the other side like this. Just like that. And you could go along the top if you want to. That might not be a bad idea. But when you put them together, it won't stick. And what's neat, neat about this is you can always take this tape off and stick it on a board. <coughs> Just like this and reuse it again the next one if you sell the painting okay also painters tape is also good if you're a real sloppy painter I have sometimes when I put the painting down and I'm uh, doing like th two or three panels together you have to paint them an, an abstract like this you put several of them together what I do sometimes paint will drip down the sides and I don't want that. So what I'll do with these this painter's tape is I will line the edge of the of the canvas. You know, just go along the edge. And then when I'm done painting it, you know, so the paint doesn't drip over. It'll drip over on this edge. I can just rip this off. You do that while the painting is it's still wet when you're when you're done painting it right away. You know, and then this edge is clean. So that you can edge it. But that's another story. Just something I throw in. <clears throat> but that's the way to do it. 
As far as varnishing it goes, let me get a cup of coffee here, folks. Got a little frog here. <coughs> Excuse me. As far as uh, uh, varnishing it goes, I, I don't think so. I, I don't varnish my paintings, which I said in paintings be in videos before, because uh, it's not cost effective to do that. In varnishing, if you have a high humidity problem, uh, it's still probably going to stick. I don't see how it might not. It could. You know, I don't know if that's going to protect it or not. I don't know. You know, you just have to trial and error. I don't know your situation like you know your situation. You know your, your humidity level. You might try varnishing it, but that's not cost effective. It's going to cost you bucks. I never varnish my paintings until I sell them or if it's going in a gallery. And if I think if you do it this way, you know, with the painter's tape, I, I think that'll cut out the problem. I think so. Give it a shot and get a dehumidifier. Okay, next question. <clears throat> Boy, I got a frog in my throat. I'm going to get rid of coffee and start drinking whiskey. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, Bernice Siegel. Okay, she writes, in your recent video, you said there was no need to gesso the canvas. What's up? Yes or no? Okay. Gessoing, when you're painting with acrylics, is an option. No, you don't have to use. You don't have to use gesso. You don't. Because what happens is that, which I said a million times before, a, a, acrylic paint is non-acidic. It's not going to deteriorate the, the fibers of the canvas. Oil paints, yes, you must gesso it. You have to gesso it when you're using oil paints because oil paints have properties that deteriorate the fibers. Acrylic paint, you can paint on anything. It's never going to deteriorate. It's the nature of the beast. I mean, the acrylic paint, there's no acidic properties to it. But I like gesso, and a lot of artists do use gesso for the simple reason that you put the gesso on wet and then you apply the paint, it gives you a different feel. It's a different way of painting. You can put the gesso on the canvas and then put your acrylic paint on it when the gesso dries, it gives it a different feel. Or you could use the gesso wet, like a wet on wet thing. You put the white gesso on and while it's still wet, start painting. You could do it that way. But do you have to use gesso for acrylics? Absolutely not. Another thing too is if you buy, if you buy already um, stretched canvases, it'll have gesso already on it. These are sealed. Not good enough for oil painting though. I wouldn't recommend it. I still, if you're an oil painter, put a couple coats on there. You must always gesso. You can never have enough gesso on it. You know, protection of the canvas. But for acrylics, right out of the box. Even if this was raw canvas, it would be okay to paint over with acrylics. You don't have to do anything. If you wanted to paint on a raw canvas with acrylics, you can do it. It's not going to deteriorate. Nothing's going to happen. Okay. Our next question comes from Bernice Siegel. Woohoo! A twofer. Okay. What is the percentage of medium to what amount of paint? I love watching your tutorials. Your sense of humor is great and I laugh at your jokes. I like her. And I learned something too. Well, we don't want you to learn anything. We just want you to laugh at the jokes. <laughs> I wish my wife laughed at my jokes. She said she married a clown. Ah, ah. Okay. Okay. What percentage of medium? Well, you know what? That's subjective. But here's a simple rule of thumb that I use. And let me show you a, a simple illustration. I would probably use 20%. About 20%. What is 20%? Well, let's say my hand is one blob of paint. And each one is 20. That's 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 equals 100. This would be 20%. See? So you'd use about that much, 20% of to your paint. Now, if you're using gloss medium, 
you know, you got to understand that gloss medium is going to start making it a little glossy. You know, so you got to be, you have to judge where you want to go with that. Matte medium, not so. You could use a little get away. It's more forgiving. So if you're using uh, any type of gel medium as a paint extender, if you are not into wanting the glossy part, get the matte medium and use that to mix with the paint. Makes a great paint extender. Now, I use the gloss medium. I like the gloss medium. I've learned to vary the uh, amounts that I use that I could get a matte finish if I want to, or I could get a gloss. It's by practicing and learning. I mean, even when you're varnishing a painting, just because you have gloss medium doesn't mean you're gonna end up with a super glossy finish. Not so. It depends on how thick you put it on and, and how you spread it out. I've got matte finishes with it, and that's what I wanted. It's You'll learn how to use it as you go along. So that's why I like, uh, gloss medium because I can go either way with that. But when um, I like the gloss medium because when I, uh, especially with the abstracts, you want them to have more of a gloss than a matte finish. I don't know why, but it tends to bring out the colors a little bit better, I think. And it looks better when it's a little bit more on the glossy side so for acrylics anyways. If you're doing landscapes and stuff like that, then more matte. You want to go with matte. You know, but abstracts kind of look cool with the gloss. Especially the gloss medium is good when you are painting the edges of your painting. Now, in previous videos, I told you about varnishing the top of the painting with gloss. You know, the gloss and the sponge routine. Hope you've seen that video. You want to do that first. And then, sometimes a little bit of the gloss medium will drip down over here. You take black paint and you mix gel medium with it, you know, your 20% or what, and you paint the edges, and any of the drips from the gloss medium varnish that you varnish the painting with down here, you'll be able to smooth it out with the black paint. And uh, it extends the glass, uh, glo uh, the black paint, and by mixing the gloss with it, it gives it that shine, which will match this then. So you varnish first, edge second. I do it all at one time. I varnish my painting, then edge it with the black, the gloss medium. Uh, how I got on this subject, I have no idea, but that's who I am. I'm a rambler. Okay, anyways, hope you learned something. If you didn't, you didn't pay for it. <laughs> you can't get your money back. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really do. I love making these videos. I just love it. And I love having an opportunity to have a cup of coffee with you. And if you have any questions at all, please keep me employed. Ask. Put the questions down there. I'll help you. I'll do whatever I can. You know, we're all in this together. If I can help you, I will help you. I'll do anything I can. You know, I want you to be a good artist. And I want to be your mentor. I do. I do. So ask me anything you need. And I'm here for you. I'm always here for you. Subscribe and enjoy a cup of coffee. And we'll talk real soon on another Q&A. Remember, Q&As happen when I get the questions. If I don't get the questions, there's not going to be too many Q&As. So ask and you shall receive. Okay, thanks very much. And don't forget to watch my other videos too. So I can make some more videos. Thanks very much and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye. I love coffee. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it.